Welcome to Tourism Talk. I'm your host, Mary Hammond, Director of the Paducah Convention and Visitors Bureau. And my guest today is Bonnie Browning, Executive Show Director for the American Quilter Society. Welcome, Bonnie. Hi, it's almost quilt show time I again. I mean it, it's April, things are budding, we're sneezing, you know. That's right. <laughs> it's getting close to quilt show. And the quilts are arriving already. Oh, I bet they are. They're coming into your, your shop? Yes, I bet that's they right. Are. We're, we're receiving quilts daily now. Well, I just can't even imagine. There, um, I know we've bought some of those boxes at our own office to store quilts in the acid-free. And you know, you wonder. I'm picturing in my own mind what it's like there at AQS and the receiving. And I can only imagine these. They use probably the big acid-free boxes, and they're wrapped all in. Um, protective and waterproof everything and well and it's a room full of, of quilts when we get them all in here so it's it's a big job just to receive and store and then transport all of those to the executive inn when we move down there well and just keeping track of them all well That's, and you know we have Terry Gwill our director oh, of show wonderful. operations he's in charge of that and he's a He's a detail guy, so um, he takes good care of the quilts for our quilters. Well, that's good. Well, we're here to talk about the quilt show and what goes on uh, during April. And of course, we're starting off already, like we talked with things in bloom and heading down to the dogwood trail. And if it stays as cool as it is, we may have dogwoods during the quilt show. I well, hope I so. hope we do. The I cool night so should help that. Yeah, I think so. But you know what? They love Paducah no matter what. That's true. And, uh, Paducah shines in April. Well, we'll just take our um, April calendar of events, and uh, I love this quilt on the cover of the calendar of events. I think it's from a, uh, a young lady in Japan. Actually, it's called The Wish. Uh, Kayoko Oguri from, from Japan. So I love this quilt. And we'll just kind of look and go through the brochure and talk about what's, what you've got planned and, and how things are going here for the 24th annual AQS Quilt Show. 24 years and you know I've been here this is my 14th show to do for I AQS. I can't imagine it's been 14 years. Yes, Already. time goes fast it when you're having does. fun. It does, it sure does. But this year things get kicked off actually the weekend before. Yes, this year we have brought in Ricky Timms does a super quilt seminar and it's two full days. They're going to start on Sunday evening, go all day Monday, and then until noon on Tuesday. And then after that, we start with some of our other events. But this is a seminar where it's all done lecture demo. Mm -hmm. They don't have to sew anything, no machines, no materials to haul. Uh, and everyone that's been to this seminar tells me it is absolutely marvelous. I bet they smile all the way through it because Ricky Timms is some kind of fun and entertaining. And if you're watching this and haven't seen Ricky Timms, Go to his website and check it out. Talented, multi-talented, and you very unassuming with his cowboy boots and hat, and just quilts and writes music and plays music. He's very accomplished music musician. Uh, you, he will be doing a performance for us again on Friday night too. There are a few yeah. tickets left for that. Oh, I expect it to be a sellout, but uh, right now we have a few tickets left. Good. So that goes on Sunday through Tuesday, and there'll be people coming in. Of course, they always come in early because you want to get to the fabric stores and get to the antique shops before everybody gets here. You know how that goes. Um, and the vendors start to come in early as well. That's but true. Tuesday, again, is the awards presentation. We start with the All-Star Review on Tuesday afternoon. Okay. Uh, and that's just mini demonstrations mm -hmm. that our instructors do. And the quilters kind of move at their own pace through the classrooms and stop and watch and they get a nice handout that shows some of the information that the quilter is demoing. And so that's our first event then on Tuesday. And then we go to Tuesday evening with mm -hmm. our awards presentation. And that again will be at the Four Rivers Center. And that makes just such a wonderful setting to show off those winning quilts. It does and there's just nothing like hearing a name called and a squeal go up and just like Price is Right running down the aisle, it's kind of fun. That's true. But it, but it, but it is an exciting time, and I know our entire staff goes, and we, we don't miss it for anything. Well, and you know, it's also a time we have about oh, more than 40 sponsors who yes. help provide the money that is given to those quilters, and those sponsors are on hand, too, to make those presentations. Sure. So that makes it extra special, both for AQS, because our sponsors are here, mm -hmm. uh, but for the quilters to have it presented by those sponsors. One of the really fun things for us, and I think for many people uh, who come from the community, are quilters that you've heard of, 
uh, you know, um, and you see them win, or people that we've worked with over the phone help them find a place to stay, and you actually get that relationship going, and to be able to go, oh my goodness, you know, I know that name, I know them, so that's pretty cool. Now, after that is the sneak preview. The sneak preview, and the sneak preview is always a benefit that we do for the Quilt Museum. The cost is $25. Mm -hmm. And um, that money goes to the Quilt Museum to, in, to help in whatever endeavors that they see fit to use that money. Uh, but we limit the attendance to that. So if you complain about the aisles being crowded mm -hmm. because there are so many quilters in town, this is an event to buy a ticket to because we limit the number of tickets that we sell so the aisles aren't so crowded. So if you've got a guest in town, and that might be a nice thing to do if you have um, want to do something extra special, bring them for the opening, uh, that would be, go to the uh, award show and then go over for the sneak preview. What, how nice could that be? Yes, and now our advanced registration closes on, on April 4th, mm -hmm. uh, but they will be able to go to the workshop desk and buy tickets mm -hmm. for that during the quilt show. Well, that's good. Now, tell us about the exhibits this year. Tell us about the, how it will be set up and what's, what's going on. Well, um, the, the large quilts and the miniatures mm -hmm. will again be in the Expo Center. That's our biggest hall and so that shows those large quilts off to the best advantage. Then on the second floor of the Convention Center we have our wall quilts mm -hmm. and we have a new, a new award this year in our wall quilts too. Handy Quilter is sponsoring a long arm machine quilting award. We have that award that's presented by Gamel for the large quilts, mm -hmm. and so this is a new long arm award for the smaller quilts. Now, and how large would that be? You think like a... It's, it's 40, uh, 40 to 80 inches, I believe, okay. is the width, and then 40 or more in length. Okay. So it could be a rectangular, a long, narrow piece, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or it could be horizontal and be a wide piece, but it has to be at least 40 inches long. Have you tried using those long arms? Oh, you know, I play with them at the show every year. Well, I don't know, you know, sometimes I'm tempted, if only I had the time to really learn how to do it, because like everything, there's a little bit of a learning curve to that. Well, it would be like writing with a very long pencil that the tip is way over there and you're here, but trying to work it. Well, the difference between the long arm and a, and a, a home sewing machine mm -hmm. is on a home sewing machine, you're guiding the fabric under the needle. On the long arm machine, you're driving the needle over the fabric, which is stationary. So it's a whole different thought process to use when you're doing the quilting. So it's secured, the fabric is all secured? Yes, it's secured wow. to the machine, the bed of the machine, and then you just move the needle sure. over the top. I don't know, that sounds pretty cool. Yes, well, it's fun, and, and I write my name on every one of those quilts. I always write, Bonnie was here. <laughs> <laughs> Kill yes. Kill, kill, kill yes. <laughs> so, but now all this uh, kicks off on Wednesday morning that's at nine o'clock, mm -hmm. and that's the same hours. It starts at nine o'clock every morning. You can get down there at eight o'clock. It still doesn't open till nine o'clock. You can join join all the people um, standing outside, just <laughs> ready to charge the doors. Yes. Now I, I want to go back and talk about the special exhibits. Yes. Because we do have a really special exhibit this year. We have a, gr a group of quilts called Cotton Poem. Uh, by an instructor named Oguri mm -hmm. and her group from Japan. And so we're going to have about, it's the same That's lady who did yeah, this, like, same lady who did this. <laughs> yes. uh, but she's a teacher in Japan, and so this is a group of her students, and they've put together a whole exhibit. And those will be on the first floor of the convention center. Okay. And I understand that the quilters are going to come dressed in kimonos to greet the oh. quilters. So it's going to be really special for them, but it's also going to be really special for us to have them here. And then in addition to those two, that exhibit downstairs, we will have... Uh, the winners from our online quilt contest mm -hmm. that we had this year and the Pilgrim Roy 2009 quilt challenge. Uh, those are the quilts that will be auctioned at next year's quilt show. Okay, then upstairs on the first, on the second floor of the convention center, we have the, the Pilgrim Roy challenge quilts that will be auctioned this year uh, during the quilt show on Thursday. And we also have Springtime Blossoms, which is another contest that we do. And so these will all be quilts with some kind of flowers on them. Well, we'll have to be looking at that for next year's brochure. Yes, and you know what? I brought a couple of those if you want to look at them. Yes, I would like um, to. We have here on the table, we have um, a quilt from Catherine Botsford from Canada. So we have entries in this little contest. And they donate these quilts to the Quilt Museum to be auctioned off. 
And so here we have a kind of an artistic version of a pot of flowers. Looks like irises to me. Beautiful. It's irises and they're three-dimensional and the centers of them are all fuzzy as well as the edges. Uh, and she's just used a riot of color on this quilt. But this is the first place winner in wow. this contest. And so it will be one of the quilts that will be auctioned on Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock. And that's a new time now for the auction this year. Let's say it one more time. Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock and it'll be in the showroom. And for our local residents that usually attend the auction in the evening, I would suggest that they park at Carson Park and ride the shuttle bus mm -hmm. down. Midday, you're probably going to have a problem finding a parking mm -hmm. place that's yes. fairly close. Right. And there you can park your car Carson, at Carson Park, jump on the shuttle bus. Mm -hmm. It's a direct route that comes right to the convention sure. center. And then when you're done, you can go back. The auction, though, again, will be 3 o'clock on Thursday, 3 to 5 p.m. on Thursday afternoon. So that's a new time. And that's a fun time to pick up a, a quilt. And it may be an antique quilt. It may be a new quilt. It may be, um, gosh, maybe a basket of A basket of fabric? Bas there's a little <laughs> bit of everything. That's uh, true. Actually, I picked up a pair of antique scissors that we've uh, contributed for Did that, you so, really? Yeah. And they also have a silent auction, too. And the silent auction will be running on Wednesday and on Friday, sure. and they'll have new items each day. So if you come and bid on Wednesday, okay. you need to be there at the end of the day because mm -hmm. they'll close that day out, and then on Friday they'll do another day. While we're talking about the Quilt Museum, can I show you something else that Please. I brought today? I haven't had a chance to see these, so I'm excited. Well, these are what we call fabric postcards, mm -hmm. and the museum calls them art cards for acquisitions, and this is a fundraiser so that they're able to add new quilts to the collection at the Quilt Museum. Every year, I'm a photographer, that's my hobby. Quilting is my work, photography is my hobby. And so different times of the year, I go around town and take pictures of things here in Paducah that I think people would want to know about or see. And so I use photographs for my art cards. Other quilters make them pieced, appliqued. Uh, some of them are embroidered by hand, by machine. Uh, they make them all different ways. But since I just finished these, I have about 20 of them here for the museum. Nancy? They tell me that, um, that the ones that the people seem to like the best are the mm -hmm. ones that show either the river boats or the quilt museum. And so I've done a whole variety of, of art cards here. Uh, some of them I've included the core of uh, discovery statues with the, nice. with the quilt museum back in the background. I've done a few of downtown Paducah. Mississippi Queen, that's um, nice. This is a brand new picture of those trees blooming down on either side of the gazebo. And the museum sells these for $30, and of course that's mostly a donation to the acquisition Quilts fund at the dog. Quilt Museum. Yes. yes, they love the dogwood, so yes. I do a collage of the dogwoods on that one. Yeah, that's very nice. But these are available all year long, so if you have somebody that is staying with you or uh, somebody that you want to write a special thank you, this is a wonderful way to do it. And I just take them to the post office. You can see we have the Quilt Museum's little logo on the back, but they can run this right through the postage machine. Of course, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, but you know but what? I, I do. Do you? When I, I travel, when I send these as thank yous. Well, they I, love getting these in the mail. I have seen them framed uh, three with a, a mat around them, and they looked so nice to have a uh, a collage of, of yes, art they looked cards. very nice. Uh -huh. um, I, I think they're too sweet, but that's, yes, it'd be a fun to get these in the mail. And it's fabric on both sides, and it has a stiffener in the inside mm -hmm. so that they'll be able to go through the machine. But anyway, if you haven't seen those, you need to stop at the museum and see the art cards for acquisitions. Yes. Well, those are, those are wonderful. Okay, back to Quilt Show. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, let's do the hours, the dates and the hours. My goodness, how did we miss that? Yes, well, it, the show is April 23rd through the 26th. Our hours are 9 to 5 Wednesday through Friday, and then we close at, at 5 o'clock on Saturday. Okay. So it's 9 to 5 on Saturday. Okay. Um, so, but it's 9 to 6 the regular? 9 to 6 9 the rest to 6 of the, the days. rest of the time. Yes. Um, it, people always say, is there a best day to come? Gosh, <laughs> it's busy every day. But you know, it's... Sometimes it's fun if you're in the mood to be in that crowd and feel the excitement. Come on one of the Wednesday and Thursday always seem like they're really, really busy. Friday's busy. Saturday, people do start to go home. It's not quite as busy. Yes, I would say if you if you haven't been here mm -hmm. before and you don't like the crowd so much, then you need to come on Saturday. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Saturday mid-morning usually mm -hmm. or by noon some of the quilters are starting to leave and that does lessen the crowds a little bit. But we also have groups of people who come in on Saturday because they can get a hotel room for Saturday well, night. Well that's true and I tell people to come in a little bit early and um, go to the to the um, awards presentation, go to the sneak preview, go to the first day and then go if you can't get to anything else. So um, yeah, there's a lot, there are many more options than, than, uh, than you would imagine. Yeah, let's tell them about uh, hotel rooms, about the list that's on your website. Yes, if you go to Paducah.travel, which I know anyone watching this has got it, <laughs> got it bookmarked, and go to um, Quilt Show, there's a, a button for Quilt Show. It has a lot of information, it has all of the events, but there's one for accommodations. It does list accommodations within about a 70 mile radius. Um, and on there it will tell, uh, you know, if it's 20 miles away and it's at uh, Calvert City, it'll tell you what hotels and if they have rooms. We are trying to get on there if they have three rooms left or if they have 25 rooms left. Um, we are updating as quickly as, as we can. So it says sold out sold or out. the availability. Mm -hmm. And then we will, at this year's quilt show, have a list of when people are taking reservations for 2009. Okay, great. So that we'll have that information as people are looking ahead. But yes, always look at that website. Um, it has a direct link to, uh, to your website so that uh, uh, folks can, can get all of the information. Yes, and on our website, mm -hmm. uh, even after we close the registration on April 4th, you can still go to the website uh, AmericanQuilter.com mm -hmm. and print off the entire registration guide. So if you're hosting some quilters uh, and you want to make sure that you have all the latest information for them, uh, I would print that guide off. Good. We may have to do a link so they can watch this show. What do you think? <laughs> that would be a good idea. <laughs> I know Tammy's back there going, yes. <laughs> well, we'll do that. We'll get the link because you, you can see all of these shows from, uh, from Channel 2 and I love it. You can go right online. And I wish I could pull up that website, but I can't write at the moment. And speaking of, speaking of uh, channels, uh, the quilt channel this yes. year will be on channel 7 on, on our cable, cha cable stations. And you know the quilters turn that on the minute they hit their they room sure and they do. don't turn it off until they leave the hotel. It runs nonstop just about. Well I know um, it's the it's on when I go to sleep and on when I get up in the morning. It seems like it's just when I'm getting ready um, for, for Quilt Show myself. So, and also, that's a good opportunity for local people to get their message to the quilters by advertising on Quilt Channel. It's probably too late to go into the quilt, uh, quilt book itself, your show book. We're working on that right as okay. we speak. We're so finishing that right now. If you're watching this and it's early April, you can still give Bonnie a call. Um, <laughs> and also, I think the Paducah Sun does a quilting tabloid as well. And they're working the on that right now good. as well, too. And that'll be out on Wednesday, the first mm -hmm. day of the quilt show. That's good. And we usually have a stack of them at the Paducah Information Booth. Something other... Um, people around town ask, well, you know, what if I have a brochure for my business? Now, if you're a Paducah business, we do have a, a, a booth at the show for Paducah information. Now, there's also a, a table over to the side where other uh, quilt guilds from around the country can put their information. But the main thing is, don't be just laying it around because it's going to go in the trash. If you right. just put it down somewhere, if you take it to the hotels, your information, talk to that front desk because they don't want just a lot of papers around. Most of them bring in like a special table just for brochures, but the brochure racks that are in the hotels, people pay to be in there. But if you talk to the people at the front desk, they'll tell you what, what you can and can't do. And the information table that we have is in the atrium of the convention yes. center. It's right down there, right around the corner from where the ambassador's booth is. And uh, I always just tell people, one stack, mm -hmm. self-serving, Yes. Uh, once in a while I come and look and see what's underneath the table and pull some stuff up off the floor if there's uh, a stack that's gotten down a little bit. I do the same. Yes, <laughs> yes. But if we find it in yes. any other location, you can't paste it on the can't doors do of the restrooms, you can't lay it on the tables in the lobby of the hotel. Uh, though that kind of information doesn't belong there. Now there's always a men's den, which is interesting, because <laughs> there are the husbands that they're done. They've seen some quilts and that's plenty. So they go to the men's den where they can watch TV and, and kind of sit around. There's some lounging. Now, um, people who have men's type activities, if it be, um, oh, I think the 
extension agents mm -hmm. um, here in, our, in town are doing golfing. that. And the golfing. Uh, mm -hmm. There's been some farm tours kind of a thing. If you have information like that, that'd be good for the men's stand. Yes, and that will be in Suite 309, uh, right across from the newsstand in the hotel shops yes. area. It's right directly across from that newsstand area. And uh, it's also a good place if you are a spouse, mm -hmm. uh, you know that you can get away there. A lot of times the guys go in there and take a little nap. It's next door, right next door to it too, is our cyber cafe. So that quilters are able to go in and check their email, send a message home. Um, we want them to uh, book their rooms, mm -hmm. uh, whatever they need to do, they can do that in the cyber cafe. We've also um, added a computer at our office that's wireless strictly for people checking their e emails. Oh, that's great. And um, printing out boarding passes, that kind of a thing. So we're, we're also offering that. Um, you know, the time has come where you can't find pay phones around town but you can get internet internet access. <laughs> That's true. So, That's true. But there, there are activities around town to complement the quilt show. As the Rotary Antique Quilt Show is going on. Um, um, gosh, Yeiser Art Center has got a fabulous uh, fiber arts exhibit. I don't know if you've been down there yet. I it haven't. just opened. It's very, it's very nice. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it's worth a stop. But one thing that people always, not always, a lot of people miss, they don't make that truck to the other end of the hotel to the pool end, and that's always, some of my favorite vendors are down there. Do you know we have merchants in seven different areas this year. They're in the Expo Center, mm -hmm. they're in the first floor of the Convention Center, the second floor of the Convention Center, next to the swimming pool yes. in the Executive Inn, below the swimming mm -hmm. pool at the Executive Inn, in the Finkel Building downtown, yes. we call that the AQS Vendors on Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And we have a special shuttle bus, the express bus. It's yes. called the AQS Express Bus that goes from the, from the AQS bus stop right in front of the entrance mm -hmm. of the hotel to the Quilt Museum, to the Finkel Building, back to the Quilt Museum, and then back. And that's a direct route that just goes round and round and round. And then this year, for the first time, we've rented the old Heil Building at Park Place mm -hmm. out on Park Avenue. And we have 50 vendor booths and three really nice quilt exhibits there. That'll be nice. And now the, the shuttle buses um, through the Paducah Area Transit, and the, this is one where the people around town uh, pay to have the stops on that. It'll be stopping uh, at the Heil Building. It'll be stopping there yes. on its way back downtown. That's good. So once it goes out into the mm -hmm. hotel and mm -hmm. mall area, picks up their passengers there, then they'll come and they'll swing through the Park Place sure. parking lot. And if you're at the mall, you're welcome to jump on one of those shuttles to come come down to the show. But the best way is, like you said, the park and ride at uh, uh, the, the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. That's the best way. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm just trying to think real, really fast here as some of the activities. As, as usual, the downtown uh, shops and businesses will be filled with quilting displays. Oh, they've already started dressing their windows. It is, it is fun. You just chime in and, and share with me some things that you can think about here. Um, there is an autograph party that always every year, and I think that's always fun to get your calendar autographed. Do you know we have a new event that we're doing for the first time this year? It's Excellent. called the AQS Book Fair. Okay. And on Friday afternoon, we do the AQS Hobbs Fashion Show mm -hmm. at the Four Rivers Center. That ends at 3 o'clock. At 4 o'clock, we're going to do this book fair. And we have almost 40 of our AQS authors are going to be in town. You know, the quilters love to meet these people up yes. close and personal. And they also like to have their books autographed. Mm -hmm. So there'll be books there for them to, uh, to be able to pick up, but they could also bring their own books to have them autographed. And that's from 4 to 5.30 at the Four Rivers Center on Friday. And then at 8 o'clock that evening is the Ricky, Ricky Tims. Tims. Ricky Tims Alive on Stage, we called it this year. Uh, he'll do, a, 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 it'll be a similar program, sure. but it will be different than he's done in the past years. So those are the three events at the Carson Center. Now there still is at the uh, showroom in the Executive Inn where Eleanor Burns is doing a show and tell. Yes, Eleanor Burns is a new sponsor of the Quilt That's Show this great. year. And so she will be our guest on stage mm -hmm. uh, with me, but she gets, she gets top billing there. And uh, we'll be doing the show and tell where the quilters can't bring their quilts in and get to show their stuff off. And I understand we have some really great prizes and surprises from Eleanor. So you definitely want to be there. Well, that's good. She is a, um, has opened a shop here in Paducah and we're glad to have her adding to uh, making Paducah a, a quilting um, a 
destination year round and she's definitely right there. I think everybody who has anything to do with quilting in, in Paducah are, are supporters of the quilt show and I, I love it that we have partners year-round partners as the well. The other thing that's going on in the showroom and because most of our classes are sold out um, always we have tickets almost always available for our lectures and our FAF lecture series is being held there in the showroom mm -hmm. this year and it's running every day except Thursday afternoon when we're doing the auction. Mm -hmm. So there will be lectures going on from Wednesday, Thursday until the auction and then all day Friday and then all day Saturday. So if you are dabbling in quilting in town here and you think you might like to go and, and see what it's like if you want to really take a class, a lecture is a good place to start? It's a good test. Uh, a lot of times I take lectures when I go to mm -hmm. events sometimes because number one you can find out a little bit about that instructor and how she teaches. Sure. Then you can test, it gives you a good test to sure. know whether you want to spend three hours or six hours with that instructor. Gosh. There are some that would tell you that's not even quite a long, long enough. That's why the Quilt Museum <laughs> offers those three-day classes. That's, that's true. Good. Well, we've quickly run out of time here, there's, um, and there's just so much happening. I hope that people will look at our website for activities around town. <clears throat> Go to the American Quilter website for more details and what type of lectures there are. See what tickets are still available. Um, and just be in the know so when our visitors come that you'll be, they'll be able to uh, share Paducah and the quilting experience. Like you always say, company is coming. Company's coming, yes. And we like light up Paducah <laughs> because even if those dogwoods aren't in bloom, we still want Paducah to, to look welcoming. If it be your front porch light, your interior lights, anything blooming or pretty in your garden, spotlight on your door just so that people can see how we live and see that we have a nice quality of life here in Paducah and that quilting is very much a part of our lives. Thank you, Bonnie, for being a part of that and for making Paducah a better place and for help to bring this 40,000 visitors <laughs> to Paducah this month. We're getting ready and we definitely will be ready in about two weeks. That's right. <laughs> Next year is the 25th anniversary. Even though we've got challenges ahead, we are looking forward to the 25th. We'll make it bigger and better. Uh, it's going to take all of us, but we'll make it work. Yes, and you know, we've invited all of the past Best of Show winners to join us oh, next year. There's more to come on that one. That's Stay true. tuned. You know, do we have to wait till next April to get together again and talk like this? We could do it more often. All right, that's a date. <laughs> How about you? We'll see you back here for Tourism Talk. But in the meantime, mark the quilt show April 23rd through 26th. Thank you for joining us.